In this episode... Someone make a transfer, please. The Fantasy Football Show. Hello listeners, welcome to episode 5 of Planet FPL's 30 in 30. My name's Serge. My name is James. And this is back to just you and me, mate. Yeah. It is, let's get it right for the listeners, it's Tuesday. No, it's Wednesday, it's Tuesday. It's Tuesday. Uh, the June Tuesday, the 4th. June the 4th. Tuesday, three days after the Champions League finale. Uh, James back in the office today. And, uh, and yeah, we'll talk about the Champions League. So we're on episode five of our 30 in 30. We've got a little bit more Champions League content coming out on on day eight, episode eight, which we'll leave you to look forward to because that's going to be a really good one. We've already spoken to uh, 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 Bradley Parker. We've spoken to Sky Player and FPL. And Chris. And we've spoken to Chris, FPL Addict. We've got FPL Canal coming tomorrow. tomorrow. FPL Pringle on Friday. Already in the can. There's plenty recorded. There's a lot of awesome content to come out still. I enjoyed speaking to all of them so far. Yeah, no, the, the 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 shows have been great. Really enjoyed all of them. I think afterwards we've all been left with the feeling of the feedback of, of people. I think, I mean, at, at this stage, we've only really had the feedback of Bradley's and Paul's Skyplay and FPL. And, yeah. And the, the feedback on both is like great. So many people have come to me and went, oh, I want to play a Sky game now. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's interesting. And I think Bradley's give people plenty to think about. Wolves are such an interesting one for yeah. for next season, where they're going to be at price wise and that. Yeah, we um we had a good old chat with Chris at FPI Addict on uh, Football Index as well, which is yeah. something that a degenerate gambler like me would be tempted <laughs> to, to try. But that was something new. I didn't I learned quite a bit there. Uh, I'm also I mean, all of the people we've interviewed are proper fans of their clubs, to be fair. I was blown away with um, even Johnny Pringle, FPL Pringle today. He's, he's City through and through. Bradley's been going to Wolves for how long? Yes. Um, so, yeah, they're proper fans of their clubs, you know. So, um, insightful. They're, they're not just uh, Johnny come lately. No, he's the, proper the, fans. The thing that the listeners are going to find the longer this goes on as well is, like, they're nearly all great FPL players as well. <laughs> like. Yeah, yeah. I think um, Chris, FPL addict, who went... Live today was the lowest ranked other than me in the correspondence, and he was still like 300k or something like that. Yeah. So, really, really good ranks uh, across all of them. So, it's been interesting. We still got plenty more to go, and we have been getting feedback from people and also ideas and suggestions like, why don't you try doing this or that, or interview this person or that person? And we're we're logging it all because uh, all ideas are welcome. I tell you what, we should do we should do quick because one of the things we've we've had fed back, particularly from episode three and the podcast yeah. with Bradley. Is pronunciations. Oh, okay. So it's Doherty. So it's <laughs> it's Matt Doherty. Have you seen that? I have seen Who's that. Who's FPL Rome Doherty. tweeted in and said you're not pronouncing it right? Yeah, we, and we, I said we're that playing too much dough in the dough. It's door. <laughs> I just said door I'd, I'd come off like a racist if I did it properly. <laughs> it's Doherty. And it's Doherty. Diogo Jota. Jota. Well, we should have known that because uh, Portugal like. Jose Mourinho instead of Jose Mourinho. And it's going to be important we so start Portuguese getting... Portuguese is hard J's, right? That's right. And Correct. it's going to be important we start getting that right because Diego Hotta, who plays for Birmingham, has been linked with a move for Aston Villa. Okay. So we might next year have Diogo Two. Jota and Diego Hotta. Okay. So we need Jota. So it's Jota. Okay. Jota pen. Jota right. notepad. Tell me now if I got that fucking wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, we'll work on our pronunciation. And I'm here just trying to put off the Champions League final, basically. Let's talk about the Champions League. My Champions League final experience is would is would will have been completely different to your Champions League final experience. Which one tell me about yours first? Uh, so, you know, I had to go to a wedding reception um, oh, yeah. on Selfish Saturday bastards. night. Uh, I mean, to be honest, they all mentioned it in all of their speeches, right? So uh, my, it was my nephew's come cut. He's my nephew, but he's similar age. He's like 32. So um, it was his wedding reception and uh, him and his uh, his wife made an entrance and uh, she said a few words and she straight away made reference to the fact that the football, uh, they'd clashed with the football and how much of a, a problem it had been that he was desperately trying to get the football on the screens and she was desperately trying to avoid it. Uh, and then she made reference to the fact that in the, we'd get the second half on the screens 
in in the venue. Now, there was a fair few people. We could not people. fucking mentioned it in the speeches. Presumably, they could have put it on a bit earlier. Well, quite possibly. So, I was told very clearly you're going to get the second half of the game is going to be on the screen. It's like fair play, okay. If I don't get the first half, I get the second half. Um, I don't know for, what, for some reason shit was running late. It's eight o'clock. This they the first dance starts. I've got BT Sport on my phone, haven't I, on my notes. I'm sitting there on the table watching the game. Everyone around the table standing up to look at the first dance. My missus turns to me, what are you doing? I was like, I watched that on the fucking video when they, <laughs> they released that. I'm watching the game. So I watched the first 30 minutes, 35 minutes, whilst speeches were going on. Uh, and if my cousin listens back to this, sorry, mate. <laughs> but I was, uh, I listened to the first, I watched the first 30 minutes, uh, then uh, switched it off and was sensible for half time. And they said they were going to say the second half, but the speeches dragged on for so long. We've got the last 15 minutes on screen and that was it. So I got the first 30 and the last 15 and the rest was on like Vidi, you know, Vidi printer or whatever, watching the text commentary come through. Vidi printer for one game. Well, you know, the, <laughs> it's not the, quite text, you know, the live sad, text commentary, sorry, where, yeah, they, yeah. where they update it. So I was just keeping an eye on that with, uh, yeah, and gently having a couple of beers. So I didn't get to watch the whole game, but um, your experience was... Probably better than mine, uh, uh, kind of, apart from losing. Different, uh, to, to say the least, is one of the, the longest days of my life, mate, um, just from the point of view of being awake. Yeah. Um, it, was a, it was a comfortable run through of nearly 24 hours up. About, Ouch. About an hour kip. Um, On the plane? Yeah. Coming back, and then I was up for about another five hours. So I got home and I was like, yeah, as soon as I get home, I'm going straight to fucking sleep. I saw the little man got second wind, I was like, no, he's bouncing around. I can't be going to sleep. I've missed him. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. went out for breakfast with a father and Laura and his mum. Uh, got about four hours sleep about lunchtime. Set the alarm so I could tweet out Paul's pod. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I absolutely shattered. The, the, the first thing to say about the day is, oh, my God, it was hot. Yeah. And like, the, unbelievable. This, uh, this wedding reception was in a marquee. So imagine being cooked in a marquee. It was roasting here as well, yeah, right? Yeah, mad hot. Lovely day. We had a, when we got dropped off the coach. Some of you might have seen. I, I put on Twitter like I've arrived and I uh, kind of streamed it live because I thought yeah. it was going to be a one minute walk around the corner, and it turned out to be about ten minutes up a hill, and like was burning by the end of it. It was so hot and lost a few pounds. In, in, on in, uh, the way. Don't be silly. I put that back on in beer, <laughs> with, didn't with I? Beer calories straight um, back on. I, in the, in the things I've read back, a lot of people have been very critical of of the final and the, and the quality of it. The football for sure. But I, I, I don't think you can understate like how hot that was. You're talking about two teams who normally play quite an intense, particularly Very Liverpool, intense. Yeah, played yeah. with intensity, right? Um, and particularly the fact the game had an early goal and Liverpool got it rather than Spurs, yeah. I think. Yeah. They they adjusted their tactics really well, Liverpool. And a lot of people say, oh, Spurs had a lot of the ball. Listen, whichever team had been in front was going to have less of the ball in that weather because you just sit behind it. Yeah. It was stifling hot even at kickoff time mm. like you could feel it and these dickheads when they done the fucking intro I don't know what that was all about we only come for the football right I yeah. don't want to see people singing on the pitch before the football they had these fucking fire things on the pitch oh the flame they? stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> the whole place I up even more it was real fucking fire mate. yeah yeah it's unbelievable it was so hot in that place um, really nice ground it's like yeah. a small version of Wembley. Of Wembley, yeah. I, I, you'll find out. I said a bit more about it on Saturday. Um, yeah, look, it wasn't to be, right? Um, and uh, uh, and uh, tell me something. Go. Did it feel different to any to going to watch another different another game of football? Or were you just going to watch your team? Yeah, I mean, consciously you, you're thinking about it. One of the things that was important to me was, like, from my perspective, I've said so many times during the last couple of months, never been at this stage, never feel like we will be again. Um, the feeling afterwards is more like, oh, maybe we can. But at, at the time, I was like, I have to take this in. Mm -hmm. There's no way I want to look back in, particularly if we'd won and been like, what was that? I would just try yeah, to take yeah. the whole event in. It was unfortunate the way, because we'd put flights to go basically straight in and straight out. Got held on the on the plane for ages when we got there, just sitting on the plane on the tarmac. So for never how, got to the- how long? A couple of hours? About an no. hour. Oh. Been landed and uh, sitting on the plane for like an hour. Trust me, I'll come back. There's worse stories than that. I was lucky and blessed that I got there. Um, so got to the stadium. It was about half three-ish, quarter to four. I think if, if I'd have been me with a couple of mates, I'd have dived into the city and dived back. 
It was with my mum and dad. Mm. You know, by the time you get in the city, it's, they're shut, it, they were mate. shutting everything Not down and it. getting everyone out of the city at like half five-ish. So we just stayed. It was quite nice that once you entered into the stadium grounds, you could get into the stadium. The stadium didn't open till six, but you could get into the stadium grounds at four. Yeah. Um, and you could only get into there with a ticket. Yeah. And they had like beer tents up and stuff like that. And it was Fine. it was good crack. It was a shaded area and that. Otherwise, Christ, I would have fucking burnt alive. Mm. A lot of people didn't make it. No. So uh, a, a few people I know. So I went on these Thomas Cook flights. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we only found out the itinerary two days before. So it was meant to be 10.30 in the morning now and then two o'clock in the morning after the game back. On the Friday, late Friday, they moved the flight back till five in the morning. Wow. Which, which was hence the waiting around in airport. Obviously no hotel booked or nothing. Yeah, yeah, Because you think yeah. you're straight out. Not that it would have been worth getting one, to be honest. We still would have done the same. Yeah. But um, I was on the 10.30 flight out. Lad I know, um, who I play football with on Thursday nights, he was on 9.50 it's kind of been well documented in the news. Like they had a uh, bird flew into the, the plane or something. Nah. What do they call it? Bird strike. Bird strike, yeah. So to check the plane out, it wasn't safe to fly. Fuck. Right, no fly out. So they go, oh yeah, we get another plane, we get another plane. So I'm keeping a, a Tottenham Hotspur Supporters Trust, a um, yeah. bit like Spirit of Shankly as well. Communication from them was fantastic. And it's a lot of unknown good work that supporters trust people do for free money as well by the yeah, way they yeah. don't earn corn on it um so i was keeping an eye on the feed and, and my mate on twitter rob white his, his name is he was the son of john white who got struck by lightning who played for spurs in the 60s great right. player was part of the double winning team yeah, yeah. Uh, john white got struck by lightning when rob was uh, i think john white was 22 or 23 wow rob was only a baby yeah yeah so yeah, rob wrote a really great book which spurs fans would love called the, the ghost of white lane and uh, so I'm keeping an eye on his Twitter feed and tweeting with him. It's two o'clock, still no plane. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of down in Madrid now, <laughs> stuck on the tarmac. Yeah. Saying a, a flight's going to come from Manchester and then Wisdom to Madrid. I think the flight took off from Stansted at uh, UK time, half past six. Nah. So that's half seven where Sorry, you Sorry, UK time, half five. Okay. Local time, half six. So two and a half hours before kickoff. Yeah. It's a two hours flight, right? Yeah. I think they did the flight in about hour and a half, hour and three quarters. And they got a police escort straight off a, off the plane onto a coach to the stadium. I think they missed the first 15 minutes. Oof. Could have been worse. You imagine that, mate. But the whole point is the experience, isn't it? It's not just the game. Yeah, no, that's not great. And then he's, his flight back was scheduled to be three o'clock. Cancelled. 3 a.m. His flight back was cancelled as well. 3 a.m. in the morning? Yeah, yeah, cancelled. Yeah. I had to wait till 8 o'clock. Uh, tell me what airline. Let's call him out. Let's uh, call him Thomas back. Cook Sport. Uh -huh. If you are ever booking so with them. So was he going officially as well, like you So were? this was recommended as part of the club. You could only get on these flights once it was confirmed you had a ticket right, through Tottenham. Right, okay, okay. Yeah, so it wasn't like Ryanair or EasyJet and none of this shit. No, 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 no. So it was... Proper it, club ev organised ev stuff. Yeah, everybody on that flight. You could have been flight. on the wrong plane. Yes. There were six of those flights. That could have been me. Could and, you imagine the and state? It was one of out of five, one out of six that cocked up. Yep. What a mess. Do you imagine the state of uh, my? Well, you met my old <clears> man now. The state <clears> of him. Stressed, panicked. We wouldn't have got there. <laughs> I would have been in prison, mate. <laughs> <laughs> you we wouldn't have got off. there. Oh, mate. Yeah. Fair play. So yeah, look into. You'll find plenty of stories on it. The hundred and the hundred and ninety um, is what they're calling themselves. 190 stands there or so. Like, right. They're all looking for full compensation for Thomas Cook Sport. And I think the, the supporters trust and everyone's pushing forward for them. Yeah, yeah, to try quite rightly. But you know what these big companies are like? Act well, they're God they're going that. into administration as well anyway. Yeah, so. So no sympathy for them. If nah. you're a Chelsea or Liverpool fan thinking they're going to Istanbul, find a different way other than using them. Because they did flights for Liverpool as well. Yeah, yeah. So dodgy. The communication for it was so poor. Well, that's why they're getting into the administration. Good riddance. Anyway, that's nothing to do with football, is it? Um, the penalty was a penalty. I well, agree. I just look, I saw it. Like straight, we, so we, we, I was sitting at the, on the telly, and straight away within two minutes, I was like penalty. And um, the wait, one of the waiters walked up to me, and he was like, "What's the score?" I was like, uh, "It's one nil Liverpool." He was like, oh, "Okay." He goes, "I got I put five hundred quid on Liverpool to win." I was like, "Fucking hell, that's." A, Beefy bet, 500 quid. He goes, yeah, half-time, full-time, Liverpool, Liverpool. I've got 500 quid on it. I was like, get in. I was like, all right, mate. Yeah, nice one. Cheers. But it was a penalty. 
can't argue with that. Well, really. it's, it's interesting. Almost quite far out. I was out having a, an argument with, or not an argument, but a conversation with Dan, our Liverpool correspondent, FPL yeah. Loco Lord, on Twitter last night. DM, and he's like, it wasn't a penalty, and I'm back there going, yeah, it was. Yeah. So even though he's Liverpool, he his opinion was it shouldn't be. A lot of people have Why? come. Well, apparently that the rulings changed, and it was changed as of the final. <laughs> Okay. Right. I think it was from the 1st um, of um, June um, or something. Uh, yeah, right? and 30 seconds into the game, it's already into question, where the idea being if it touches any other part of your body first, it's not a penalty. Right, okay. But my understanding is kind of similar in an odd way to the Danny Rose handball penalty against Man City in the first leg in the quarterfinal. Yeah. Where I thought, if you make your body bigger, yeah, it's handball. So, so what they're I saying think... is if, I, if, I, if, I, if someone crosses the ball in and I, and I just control it on my knee and then tap it in with my hand, it's not a handball because it touched another part well, of my no, body that, first. Well, that would that be intentional, wouldn't it? Well, yeah. If you did that. I if you know. were but like a, I on, just think Henri, France against oh. Ireland, where he let it roll down his arm and scooped it with his hand, yeah. then obviously it's deliberate handball. It, yeah. the, the, the case in point was he had this hit another part of his body first and touched his arm and therefore wasn't deliberate. Uh, my, <laughs> my point on it is, first thing I want to say is I think Mane meant it. And I think it's genius play. Trying to play for it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I genuinely thought he was there so long. He was like, if you're going to keep your fucking arm there, mate, I'm going to aim for it. <laughs> and I, my opinion always is if you have your hand above sort of an outstretched wide shoulder length level, yeah. you're asking for it. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. It I was, was that, behind that's the goal. What I thought. His arm was too far away from his body. At the time, I was behind the goal at that end. When the decision was given, I was, oh, fuck. But my instinct wasn't what's going on or it's not yeah, a penalty it's I just penalty, thought I know that in Europe it's always likely to get given as well mm. um, I thought Loris had saved it yeah. I thought he'd got there um, and having seen it back I think he he probably should have saved it oh, Salah hit it really hard and well but I think Hugo would be disappointed and like I said from there Liverpool were able to, to play the game yeah I mean how many games uh, how many games this season you're going into half time with Liverpool who haven't got the majority of possession Rare, very rare. Not many. You mate. were what, 65%, I think 60, even, 40, I think 65, even 35? The, the two games against City, they might have shaded the position exactly. in the league this year, I think. So, so for Liverpool, it might be one of the first times this season that they haven't had the majority of the possession. But I, I really felt Tottenham were a bit toothless in attack. Just just didn't have had, that cutting edge. Yeah, no, agreed. We had we had loads of situations where we had sort of three on threes. Mm. And the decision making was poor. It was one in the second yep. half where it was like somebody fucking shoot seriously. Mm. Um, we had eight shots on target. I think they were all in the last fifteen minutes. Yeah, because um, the, th yeah, there was a point that, where the possession was so low, but the shots on target was the, zero. The only one for me I thought was, and I've seen it back, and it wasn't pretty. Ericsson's free kick from behind the goal. I, for half a second, I could see it dropping in. Yeah, yeah. Um, I do think if we'd equalised, we'd have won. I really felt that if some buts might be maybe's though. I was I was speaking to people half time saying like if we could if we could nick the goal we would have a short period of opportunity where I think we'd have capitalized. Put the pressure on. Genuinely, I think if we'd have equalised, we'd have we'd have won. But no complaints. Like I said, all those are focusing too much on sort of possession stats. The fact we had eight shots on target was right at the death. We we, we had a long periods of the game where we didn't hurt them. We didn't threaten them. It, toothless. I just felt it was just... And, and I can understand the heat and what have you. Liverpool weren't like all guns blazing. No, they were nowhere near the their best. In the first half, they did have more chances. Trent hit a, that shot from outside the box. And was Robertson pretty decent. as well. They were long-range efforts. Yeah, they were. But uh, they, they were hit well. Um, and in the end, the second goal really killed it. And you could tell that you were pressing on too high and they got caught on the break. Um, yeah. So, interesting fun fact... Um, my my uh, parents were born in Kenya, uh, so we're East African Indian. Indian You're going to tell me Kenya. that Victor Wanyama is family. Nah, he loves spaghetti. Nah. You know? But my my cousin uh, who lives over here now, but was born and bred in Kenya, took the most amount of pleasure in telling me that Divok Origi is actually Kenyan, but then born in Belgium, and Divok Origi's dad played for the Kenyan national team. Learn new shit every day. Right. There you go. With Divock Origi, I think, has always been... At, at least our talent. FPL managers know at the start of the season what to do now. That's brilliant. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get Divock Origi in if he's like £2 million. Um, I've always rated Origi I as like potential. Him. I like uh, him. It's just a case of will he break through. I mean, personally, I'd play him ahead of Sturridge, for example. Well, Sturridge, Liverpool have announced this afternoon, Sturridge and Moreno 
uh, are being released, released on yeah. freeze. I can see both of them at West Ham. Oh, that's nice for you. Uh, it's not for me. I'd, I'd, to be honest, I'd like Daniel Sturridge at Spurs. You can come and sit on my bench. Mm, yeah. There's never been a question of talent. And the season that he had with Suarez, they really were fire. But it just hasn't happened since. I think one of the promoter clubs might pick him up, to be honest with you. Uh, I can't see him coming to West Ham. Well, like what are you going to do? Replace like injured players. Yeah, but I mean, think of the uproar. You're going to replace Andy Carroll with Daniel Sturridge. It's like for like. And we've also let Lucas Perez go now. He's gone to Al- Alaves. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's like for like. If we're, if we're thinking about getting better, you can't get Daniel Sturridge in. And Moreno ain't coming. Forget about it. We've no. We've got two decent left back. I think, uh, I'd rather have Masuaku than Moreno. That says a lot. Marino's pretty shoddy, actually. <laughs> He's not Liverpool class. No. They will need a new left back now. I was thinking early in terms of where, what can they do to, to really improve the squad. So I think central midfield areas is really difficult because Vinaldum and Henderson, particularly in the, in the last sort of six, eight weeks of the season, really good. Vinaldum overall had a great season. Uh, Fabinho. Oh, boy, but he scored quite a lot of goals as well for. Uh, you wouldn't think that Vinaldum would score five, six goals in the season, but he did. Important goals at times as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, Fabinho, I really like. I think he's a really good footballer. Mm. Keita, you think, will be better next year. Still I like got, Naby Keita. Still I think got he's Milner. a very good player. We've got Lalana on the books. Yeah. So I, I, that's going to be... Yeah. Shakiri, well, Shakiri, Shakiri, more one of the front three, yeah, he'd really. Yeah, probably play ahead of Mane. So or wh- like I, that. where do they go and improve? It's really difficult for them now. Their defence, like, you can't fuck with that Yeah, but say, like, well. you'd look at, say, Matip who yeah. I thought had a really good game. And, and I think he's quite solid generally. I think he's better than Lovren. Because I just think Lovren will have great performances, but he'll have the odd four or five out of ten. When you're trying to be consistent at the top of the league, you can't afford it. I think most it, people will agree with you that... If they go and buy another centre-half, that's going to really stifle Joe Gomez, I think, who's a top yeah. talent as well. Yeah, yeah. He was, you know, first choice with Van Dijk at the start of the season. And I think next year he'll be... When you're looking for some sort of balance in terms of budget, Joe Gomez... For FPL will be someone we're really Yeah, I mean, if he hadn't got injured, he was in your squad this season. He was in my squad this season. Uh, I don't I'm sure think, it was. I had him the year before at 4.5 when he was sort of dipping in and out. Mm. Um, but yeah, if he's sort of around the five mark again next year, if he starts, he could he could actually be the, the sensible way to go for Liverpool. Just get them regular sort of six, six points every other week. He's not going to hit the bonuses of the others, but... It might do you the trick actually if he's yeah. going to be yeah. the cheapest. Like we we you'll hear on Friday's pod we were speaking with FPL Pringle about people like Zinchenko and Stones and might they be the way to go defensively from City rather than say Laporte and Edison. Um, I think Gomez Liverpool possibly. Yeah, we need these prices, man. Yeah, <laughs> we, we really we, do. We, we're gonna have a we're gonna have a while, but um, we, we're keeping the community going at the moment. Um, Spurs. No regrets. Main feeling is is pride. You can't have regrets. No. Because truth, the, the the reality is, and I'm not trying to be harsh, you didn't deserve to be there, really. Why not? Because you were lucky in quite a lot of the games. Yes. Look at it. Look at the group stages. It was a late comeback in the group stages and the Ajax Ooh. game and the City game. So it's not that you didn't deserve to be there. At the end of the day, you go through, you go through. But it wasn't like a cruising through to the final. No, it was, we definitely it had was, uh, strokes of luck. I'm not going to argue. Yeah. So at that point, it's like everything that comes is a bonus, in my opinion. So yeah, but my team took me to places I never thought it could be. I, you know, I keep reminding myself since Saturday. Think back to the Ajax and the City game, and yeah, like those two games give me emotions I'd never had before. Yeah, I've been going every week for yeah. 30 years. Took me to, and they took me to a place I never thought I'd get to. The challenge now is. Is it sustainable? Is it something we can achieve again? I, I think there'll be mass changes in the squad. I think Trippier's definitely looks like he's going. I still think Alderweireld will go. I think Eriksson will go. I think there's others on the on the fringes. Definitely sort of like Lorente, Janssen and Kudu. Possibly even like people like Wanyama, Dyer, mm. Aurea. I think there could be mass changes at Spurs this summer. I think we're going to spend. I think yeah. we're going to recoup some as well. Yeah. It's going to be the complete opposite to a normal window for us. I think there's going to be quite an upheaval um, and getting these transfers is going to be particularly important. Okay. So why do you think that? Because the club has a good culture. It's fairly settled. You don't have any players that are causing kind of unrest within the no. dressing room. They obviously love the manager and he's doing a good job. 
You've had a fairly stable, settled squad for the last 18 months to two years because you haven't even bought any players. You're settled and you've done well. Finishing fourth, okay, you'd rather finish third, but you, you've you got through to the final of the Champions League. You've had half-decent cup runs. Um, why do you... You don't need overhaul. Why do you want to get... So, okay, Ericsson, I can understand people coming in to want to buy him. Ericsson's only got a year left on his contract. Mm. You either sign or you fuck off, right? Yeah. I, I don't think... I, I can't see Levy making the same mistakes that, say, Arsenal made recently with Ramsey and that, right? No. Le- and the that. club's still burnt with what happened with the other fellow who went to Arsenal 18, 19 odd years ago are not going to allow that position to be in that way again for a big name player. Yeah, Trippier is someone who, to be honest, you can just judge it by the stuff at the end of the game, the interview he had with one of the, the press people saying we need to sit down and talk about it. Spurs, are, they're talking about getting 40 million for Trippier. Mm-hmm. He's had a bad season. Um, I like him as a footballer. Delivery is good. Defensively, he's not great. Spurs would look at him and go, he's 28, we've got 40 million for him. We've got a young player in Carl Walker-Peters who I think personally might start next season yeah. and could be a real FPL budget option if he's sort of four and a half. Yeah, or you top up your 40 million with another 10 or 20 and go they'll, and get they'll look, they'll look at if they If they decide, well, yeah, they could do something like that. They could sell Trippier and Aurea for sort of 60 to 70 million. Just get Wamba Saka. And I know that sounds laughable, right? But we spoke about Chilwell's fee, right? Yeah, yeah. So you it's sell, not laughable. You, it's fine. You, well, it's the modern world, right? So you sell yeah, yeah. the two of them for 60 to 70 million. You bring Walker Peters up. And then if you want to spend half of that, not on a Wamba Saka, because I think he'll go to a club who's going to give him more in wages. But it could be could be that Spurs will go, yeah, there's 60 million for that fella. I don't know. I think in terms of our style, we would want someone who's uh, more comfortable on the ball at the moment. Um, it's not to be critical of wan because I would love to get him. He just doesn't get beat one-on-one. But I think we'll we'll look yeah, that's more... Why I'm, that's why I mentioned him. You mentioned Trippier's not so so hot defensively. So yeah. wan solves that problem. Yeah, possibly, really. maybe. And then obviously Toby, as far as I'm aware, can be bought for 25 million. Fine. He's going to go, isn't he? Mm-hmm. If, if, if someone wants, someone's going to bid that, whomever it is, even if it was a case of, I don't know, Guardiola looked to him... Um, back up as, as back up for say a John Stones or something or compete with yeah. John Stones as a short term I mean, option maybe Alderweire was better than uh, Stones in my opinion well, there's not much he's not, a be- he's not a better technical player he's a, certainly a better defender at the, mm. at the moment um, and you'd think if City are maybe missing a bit of leadership there that kind of profile might work as a yeah. as a short term solution I don't see him going to United now I've said I think it'd be a bad signing for United. I think they need to target younger players. I know I've seen the last couple of days being mentioned with Harry Maguire again, which whether Delict. that's whether that's the right and delit, obviously. So, some people think that's a done deal. Some people think he's going to Barcelona. I don't know. Two hundred and fifty thousand pound a week is mad money. If though. they get delit, it's a great signing. Of course, but it's no mad question. money. Yeah, but then that's your centre half for ten years now. Start thinking with like a uh, forward thinking. I United. Are, it's the Mourinho effect, right? You're just looking to plug holes. Yeah. Go and have a philosophy of, okay, that's our target. If if they decide it's Harry Maguire, go Harry Maguire. He's going to be your centre-half for the next five years. If they get the lit, that's an unbelievable signing. Mm. He could be at United for 10, 15 years. Yeah. What else we going on in the transfer rumour mill? We, uh, not much. Well, we're waiting Everything to see what happens quiet. at Newcastle still. Yeah, no news on the uh, shake coming in. The interesting thing about that with, with Newcastle is the, the clock is obviously ticking in terms of Benitez's contract runs out on June the 30th. Right. And suddenly from being in a position where obviously they're getting excited thinking they're getting this crack cocaine fucking hit of money Yeah. to being in a position where they might hit the end of the month and they've got no owner confirmed and no manager and then suddenly you're starting the season and it's fucked. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we, it's kind of day to day with Newcastle at the moment. We don't really know What's what's happening? You... Lacazette, Barcelona, rumours I heard, I heard today. I heard all Bamiang, China this yeah, morning both. as well, which I know both. Adam Adam said that that was a sh- before Arsenal bought all Bamiang said that was a strong rumour, and and actually I don't think we spoke about um, like Enketia recently. We were speaking mm. on episode one, yeah, yeah. Uh, about Arsenal's the youth. young talents they've got, and say someone like Enketia is going to be completely blocked off, yeah. by all Bamiang and Lacazette. And actually, unfortunately, Arsenal looked better probably when one of those two has played in a, a more a wider, of a, a role. wider role. And actually, it might be better off with only one of them. If they sell one, it gives them a, a lot, a lot more funds to spread. We spoke about the difficulty they might have in in buying good players. 
if you suddenly what's all Bamyang's market value? It'd be more than what they paid now. Yeah, they paid what sixty, probably didn't they? seventy, eighty. I'd say, especially if he's going to China, they got money there. They're chilling. Uh, neither will Bamyang or Lacazette would go for less than what they paid, which I think was roughly sort of fifty to sixty. Yeah, for, I think for Lacazette both. was fifty or Bamyang was sixty. I think so. That, sound, mm. that sounds about right. Yeah. Um, Sarri. Looks well, like just just before we jump off the Gooners, uh, what's your betting? Is all there next season or not? Because I'm putting money on not. I hope so. <laughs> but he's there. I mean, yeah, obviously. yeah. I was like, you cheeky shit. Um, <laughs> I just know I don't think he's going to be I there. I just next know he's constantly going to be un- unstable while while mm-hmm. he's there. So yeah, I, hope I think they're going to struggle to find someone that will take him though. That's the only difficulty. As I said uh, on Saturday's pod, I'd sell him for free, mate. Yeah, they'll they, they happily probably let him go to get the wages off their books, but I'd, I'd be I'd be trying to tie him to every fucking club in China. Yeah. And then he keeps the wage he wants as well. Exactly. And it'll be his quality of level in terms of its intensity. Yeah, true. He'll love it out there. Or America, an LA Galaxy or something. Yeah. Uh, uh, Sorry, you were saying. Yeah. It looks like he's asked to leave, doesn't it? Uh, I don't know. We've got Matt Child in the Matt room. Matt Child, what do you think? The you, camera. You, you, you still want Sorry to go? Oh, he's going to Juve. He's stating the Matt fucking obvious Child. there, isn't he? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, uh, is Allegri gone? No. I think uh, Allegri is leaving Juventus. Yes, yeah. confirmed, 100%. But uh, the, all the reports would suggest that if Sarri goes, it could well be Fat Frank. I think Chelsea fans... Bad are, move. I agree. Bad I move. It just look, we not don't, ready. We don't know, right? And it, it's all well and good saying it's not ready. Actually, we always criticise the big clubs for not giving an English manager a chance. Where sure, I just don't. But think you it, don't give them a chance when they haven't cut their teeth. But the timing, he's the, done one season. The timing, he's managed the one timing season. might be right in terms of they've got to blood some of these youngsters now if they're not spending right. Mm-hmm. And actually, with him, it, it might be the right time to start something and actually go. Okay, this guy's going to be the manager for five odd years. I think a little like you that it could blow up quite badly how how old was uh, Pochettino when he came to Spurs oh, how old is he now um, you I think he's, you, rel- he's relatively you, young isn't well, he you won, Early 40s, you won a cup game 7-4 four, seven, four or something like that was it what uh, you won a cup game this season the way in the FA Cup or whatever midweek was it Tramir 7-0 7-0 uh, oh was it 7-0 and was that his seventh wedding anniversary nah something like that you won You won a game oh it's uh, 6-2 at Everton yeah and, and he said it was his six-year wedding anniversary. Oh, okay, that's what it was. And he was like, there's your present, But bitch, I thought that off. there was one which was his age. Like, I thought you'd won a game that was he was 46, 47, something like that. I don't know. No. Back to it. How old do you think... How old was Poch when he came to Spurs five oh, years ago? Early 40s. Okay, so Frank's late 30s, right? Still. So Poch had done at least five, six years in management before he came into a big six club. And I think just... I'd like to see Frank do a few more years before he came up to a, a bigger club. I don't doubt that he can get the respect of the players and I don't doubt that he um, he will have that commanding respect. But tactically, I think you can get found out if you haven't kind of been there a little bit. That would be the biggest one. I think it's the one the English coaches really struggle with now. Mm. That's why I think Steven Gerrard was very clever in going to Rangers because... It's uh, it's a two team league. Yeah, it's not quite. No, it's a one team league. It's a one team <laughs> league with three clubs, three or four clubs below in Aberdeen and Hearts and Rangers. But Rangers were always going to be second or third in that league, which was as good as long as the gap was closing. He would have been all right. And uh, he's kind of really being himself. I think uh, what I've seen with Steven Gerrard gives me more confidence in him making it as a Premier League top tier manager than Frank Lampard so far. I just think Steven Gerrard's a, f- a, a born winner. He don't give a fuck. That guy is about winning. Yeah, but I think Lampard's the same, isn't he? Yeah, I, I think uh, I could see him making a naive tactical mistake, Frank, whereas Steven Gerrard would have a little bit more of a, a bit more nous about him. A bit of the nasty side of the game. Talking of managers, one that's probably gone a little bit under the radar is Chris Wilder at Sheffield United. Apparently rumours, a uh, bit of frustration, not money to spend... And apparently West Brom are looking at him. Okay. We can't believe he... I mean, he's a Sheffield United fan. Through and through. We can't believe... I mean, we'll speak to FPL Blade about it when we have him on uh, in a few pods' time. But, uh, yeah, that, that's that's a, a rumour. Like, in which, it, obviously, you don't want to be destabilised in any way when you're about to get promoted. No. But they can't spend money that they don't have. 
and they'd be foolish to rinse themselves into debt just to try and survive some of the riches you make now though you have got to take mm. a it doesn't mean i think it's a hundred million pound game isn't it well you've got to be careful so. with your promoted side like that where don't forget they were in league one like a year or two earlier right so the budget and the wages their players on will really be low in comparison to say villa Villa are probably a lot of their players were already tiered to be sort of yeah. Premier League wages. Think like Jack Grealish and stuff like that. The, what you got to be careful to do is not go mad on the wages. I think it's all right to do the fees because then their assets you can sell them back. Yeah, it's the wages where you have to be particularly careful in in that mm. area. It doesn't mean they can't go and buy some of the best young Championship yeah. and League One talent yeah. or even Premier League talent. Start picking off some of the clubs that have have come down that's that's destabilizing worry for them i think if that's yeah. true yeah interesting uh, no other kind of transfer news really at the moment it's early doors mm. I, I i i learned as a spurs fan not to fucking get excited about any of it anymore i keep talking about um i tell you what i did watch i watched france against bolivia sunday night just to watch a different game of football and get over it yeah because i'm that sad yeah fucking hell france were good yeah Griezmann. Um, uh, and don Belay who's been linked with Spurs. If you Don read, Bele? Yeah, so it's N. We like buying guys whose first letter is N, mm, like N-G, N-Gudu. Yeah. So now we're going to buy N Dombele. Okay. But uh, this guy is a player. Yeah, where's he at the moment? He's at Leon. Okay. Um, he was outstanding at Man City in uh, the first group game of, of the Champions League. And City are apparently interested in him as well. So I know if City are interested, we ain't going there because we just won't try and get You won't try right. and no, get jacked up in a price no, war for sure. No fucking... Bubble. But I mean, priority for Spurs certainly will be a uh, central midfield player. Mm. That's an absolute certainty. We have got, obviously, Nations League to look forward to. Which yes. starts, it'll be Fifth, tomorrow night. Today's the 4th. 5th, yeah, tomorrow yeah. Fuck it. Me and Suj can't get our heads around this, this, this idea that we're 30, recording. Because normally we just record and go, man, shall I press the fucking button? Yeah, um, yeah and we can't get our head around away. pre-recording here. So this is going to go out tomorrow anyway. So yeah, today, Nation League starts. I think Holland will absolutely batter us. <laughs> Do you think so? Yeah, so? I looked at them. They're 12 to 1 to win the Euros next summer. I think, that's a, I think if they win this Nations League, they won't be that price in a week's time. Nah, I'm tempted um, to have a look. I, I don't know. The, the youngsters that we have, like Rashford, Lingard and co, Sterling. Stop this. They stop play, this. They play better for England no, than they do. No, stop this Jesse Lingard youngster bollocks, right? Okay, he's not a youngster, <laughs> but they, they they play better for England than they have for their clubs. You you can't argue with that. Mm. Although, come on, yeah. they play for England once every three It's a shame like months, the, the really. two Chelsea boys, Hudson and Doyle and Loftus-Cheek being injured. Yeah, man. Is, is, Disappointment. Is a shame. Um like England are England are progressing well at a fine rate. I, I just don't think we'll be beating Holland on Thursday night. Um, be interesting to see how the nation reacts if if we win it. Yeah, because very. I it's think still silverware. The fact it's on Sky rather than terrestrial TV, I think as well. The, the coverage has kind of been under underneath as a as mm. an undercurrent. Yeah. Um. I, I intend to watch the game on Thursday night at home rather than go down down the pub. Yeah, I don't know if that will change if we win Thursday and then think, oh yeah, Sunday night down the pub. Because um, does it matter? Do we care? Or it'd be nice to win it, but I don't. I'm not. I'm not going down the pub to watch it. I'll happily watch it at home. So it's like the Europa League two of of international football, something like that. That's a thing, you know, Europa League. Yeah, two. 2020, 21, yeah. right? Three thirty p.m. on a Thursday. That is stupid. Don't at me. <laughs> that is stupid. <laughs> it's a real thing, mate. Uh, let's see. And Liverpool confirmed in Qatar yeah. for the Club World Cup, which is not the version that's going to be in 2021, which is supposedly going to be an expanded 16-team summer tournament. This is the same bollocks with uh, one team from each continent plus the league champions from Qatar. Liverpool are entering the semi-final stage. It means they'll have at least one Premier League blank in December and depending on how the fixtures work out, it might even work out to be two. Wow. Possibly. Depends how it works out with the Champions League. And I believe the League Cup scheduling, if Liverpool were to progress in that, could get very awkward. Fair play. Um, so that's something to watch out for. Liverpool obviously will now play in the Super Cup against Chelsea in Istanbul, scheduled three days before the start of the Premier League. And are scheduled to um, play... Is it not in... I thought it was on the 14th. I thought... 
it was in between game week one and game week two. Oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Game week one is starts on the tenth, and I think this is on the fourteenth. Oh, I need to check that out. Yeah, you, I'm pretty sure it's in between game week one and game week two, mate. If, if you've corrected me, I'm fucking ultimately impressed with that. <laughs> and they obviously play Man City in the Community Shield yep. the weekends. That's the fourth. Before that's Sunday obviously a really good pointer. Liverpool, Man City, and the yeah, Community a really Shield. Decent game. Really good pointer for what will happen at the start of, of next season. Yeah, go on, tell me. The one benefit of us losing to Liverpool is, and someone mentioned this to me on, on Sunday, was um, that I won't be going to Istanbul. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking, yeah, that's another Thomas Cook sport headache that I'm, I'm going to avoid. I've got, uh, you'd have been all right in Istanbul. I've got uh, pals out there taking care of you. Did you find the date? Uh, yeah, it's the 14th. You're yeah, absolutely so right. So that's in, in between weeks one and two. Correct. Gotcha. Mm. I was thinking Liverpool are going to have to play sort of three times in six days right yeah. at the start. So Again, that, you're thinking, look, what, on the like, you've got two British clubs, just fucking play at Wembley and be done with it. You it's know all what I mean? pre-announced, isn't it? We get yeah. back to this as a, as a Azerbaijan bollocks. If you haven't seen, by the way, the video that Paddy Power did after the Europa League final, um, it's one of the funniest things you'll ever see. It's yeah. about Arsenal fans arguing about whether Chernobyl was a bigger crisis than the Europa League final. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll, I'll link it after Tweet this it. pod when we release it. Yeah, that would be good. Absolutely sensational. Yeah, they're, they're a weird fucked up bunch. I can't think that Spurs and Chelsea in Istanbul would have been as peaceful as Spurs and Liverpool was in Madrid. <laughs> well, that, there was, was, there was, uh, to be fair, I saw a lot of stuff yeah. on Twitter of the fans all drinking together and you need it. Like football gets enough bad stick for people fighting. I, I think thought it was carried out in good spirits. For, for a lot of us who spends kind of uh, a lot of our time looking at Twitter and all these dickheads who are, yeah, football Twitter and all this bollocks, follow me and I'll f- fuck off. Yeah, all that shit. They're, they're, it's all about getting the digging and the hate, right? Yeah. A lot of these people don't go to football regularly. They don't no, live in no, that no. cycle of understanding. So, yeah, there's dickheads who support Spurs. There's dickheads who support... Um, Liverpool um, but I think that you put those amount of people in that heat with that amount of beer things can go wrong but the flip side of that is who wants to get fucking arrested in Mr Champions League final exactly yeah, like, seriously you're a nice use a little game bit of your noggin right yeah, yeah, for sure. you know, no one's gonna I think if you dump the two sets of fans in Istanbul in August there'd probably be a bit more trouble Spurs and Chelsea in Istanbul would not have been clever nah, nah it I really mean. wouldn't have been um, so yeah I'm not too disappointed not to be in that <laughs> and yeah saved a sh- shitload of money as I said I spent more this weekend than you spend on your season ticket uh, I had to so f- uh, Friday was the 31st I had to renew my season ticket by 5pm you did it I was on 4.50 f- 3.30 fi- really? in the afternoon why are you yeah. such a knob <laughs> uh, because my, uh, my my season ticket was actually in someone else's name uh, who was higher up on the waiting list for me, and they had to transfer it into my client reference number, which I only got confirmation Friday morning that it had been done. So then I had to phone up. Um, so I was going to pick up mine and my son's. I had got two under 16, I was only going to get one. And then it came to it, and I was like, it's 200 quid for the whole season. And then for the sake of losing loyalty points and building up that record, I just paid the other 200 quid. So I've got myself and my two boys, and then my brother and his missus have got theirs as well in the same block, so... Exciting, right. but yeah, it was cheaper than your thing. Yeah, got that. Should we, should we wind up, Matt? Wind up, Matt. Matt, who? Matt Charles. How are we going to wind him up? Is, he, uh, Is this part of the right. podcast? Is this actually part yeah, of the yeah, podcast? Yeah, yeah. I don't know what you're yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait, we just hang on a sec. Why is the uh, why is the H six not recording? Why is the uh, audio not recording, Matt? Hey, Matt, what the fuck have you done? Matt Child. This ain't been recording, mate. Is the red light not on on the recorder? The fuck have you done? We've got no fucking footage, mate. <laughs> Come here. It is on. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> go back to worrying about Sari. That's it. That's the end of the episode. Oh, dear. That was shit, wasn't it? You did worry a little bit. Oh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I, I ain't worried. About as worried as... Uh, um, shout out to that. these two plunkers, Matt and Manchild, because they're doing a lot of Fuck fucking me. editing for these podcasts, I, no, no joke, mate. I spent two hours editing today as well. Uh, the, the little trip to Madrid and all the other stuff I had to do, so... All good. Um, let's cut it. <laughs>
Let's do it. End of cool. episode five. So coming up, we've got tomorrow uh, FPL Canal. Yeah. Look at, uh, some you, of the... If you want to know why his name's FPL Canal, then listen to You have to listen. It's exactly. not Canal like the fucking river. Yeah. Um, we do quite a bit of stuff for getting to know him and his... his... <laughs> He's thinking behind um, some of the numbers. We talk about the promoted clubs and good players that performed well in the second half. Yeah. We've got FPL Pringle on uh, Friday. Yeah, super knowledgeable um, about City. Been yeah, really time. good stuff. Quite detailed on City in terms of the, the stuff about the club and FFP and the ownership. Yeah, um, nice. And some stuff that maybe we wouldn't normally talk about um, about City, which is really good. Johnny comes off really well. Um, I'm not going to talk about Saturday's podcast. You can tell them what that is. Well, uh, it's a it's a day in the life of... Uh, so Me. Yeah. Uh, it's a uh, audio blog of the... It's not even 24 hours. It's more like 48 hours in and around the Champions League. Um, and I've had the pleasure of listening and editing editing it. So, is it good? Um, well, you, you judge for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but it's it's not long. It's not long. But nah, it is nice sure. to get an insight into uh, you and and the the game. I thought it was really good. Um, followed by then we're back to Sunday. Um, I think Sunday will be uh, three five who Gooners. Um, and I don't know who we got after that. <laughs> yeah, but then we're we're a third of the way through thirty and thirty. So keep it coming. I can't. Um, we're keeping the podcast short, thirty to forty minutes. Forty minutes top. So. Uh, we're not asking for too much time, but it is nice to get an insight from fans of those clubs um, as well as listen to you and me, I guess. Yeah. Uh, anything else to add? Nah, let's wrap this shit up and Fine. get ready for Hit the next subscribe, one. subscribe, share the podcast with fans of whatever clubs. Hit the little bell sound or the notification so that it pops up when you know we've got another podcast live. The plan is simultaneously audio and YouTube about four o'clock UK time every day. Yeah, it was sometime between three and four, but no later than four. We're aiming for four every day. Um, so yeah, tune in. And, uh, yeah, we'll keep it coming. Ciao Pick for now. Fast. Cue music, pricks. Ciao for now is my line. Oh, yeah, it is, actually, yeah. Do you want to do it the other way around? Ciao for now. Ciao for now. Cue music, man, child. Cue music, man, child. The Fantasy Football Show.